Hello, welcome. Welcome to Unity Books. I just want to say from the start, it is not a cookbook. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. It's a really important night, a media conference merged with a launch. Um, it's a really big moment of pride for Unity Books uh, to be hosting Nikki Hager's new book, published by Craig Potton. Um, thank you all for being here. A special thanks to Nikki Hager for his perseverance and for his depth of digging. Um, Nikki will speak at the end of this, these short launch proceedings, um, and then he will speak with the media. Uh, Robbie Burton will distribute copies of the book to the media, and the book will be for sale after the speeches. Before Nikki speaks, the book needs to be launched and it will be launched by Julia Wells. But first of all, before that, we need a word from the publisher. Please welcome from Craig Potton, the guy who was awarded the New Zealand Publisher of the Year only a month ago, Robbie Burton. Thank you, Tilly. That's really nice. Um, Nikki and I have been working together as an author and publisher for um, well over 20 years, and this is the first time that we've ever had a book launch. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, and there's been good reasons for that. Um, um, uh, but I have to say it feels great to actually to, to be doing this from the mighty unity in the heart of Wellington. And one of the reasons for that is that I actually think that um, um, Nikki's known for many things, but in the, the media scrum and the controversy that surrounds his work, it's often forgotten that what underpins it is the fact that he's a writer. And he's a very, very good writer. I work with a lot of authors, but there are few uh, that can match his remarkable ability to uh, find clarity in mountains of information. Um, and then shape that into book that actually is readable and intelligent. And I um, and often to do that, as he's done with this, with um, appallingly tight and pressured deadlines. But if I was to say one thing about Nicky, the thing that I respect him most actually is his incredible uh, integrity. This guy um, uh, chooses very carefully what he what he writes about and what he doesn't. And but above all, he has an utter commitment um, to books and to the written word and to the role of, of long-form writing and keeping a democracy alive and kicking. So it's my very great pleasure to kick off the real business tonight and to welcome to the microphone Nikki's daughter, Julia. It's wonderful to see so many people here tonight and it's an honor to be launching this book. Nikki's book is titled Dirty Politics, and it tells of the impact of organised attack politics on the whole political system. Not only does it talk about the effects on the individuals directly attacked, but about the pernicious effect that this type of politics has throughout New Zealand, putting people through our whole country off politics. Dirty Politics is also about some of the key political figures of our time. It implicates John Key and other senior National Party MPs and staff. It tells the stories also of those attacked by them members of the public and opposition leaders. It's been an enormous honour to watch this book being written, seeing the evidence pieced together and seeing the stories forming, also watching how incredibly hard Nicky works. And his work's paid off. Dirty Politics is an amazing read, it's insightful and it's engaging. So often the public only sees a political event and then a flurry of commentary around it. They don't see what's actually going on behind it. Dirty Politics is essential reading for anyone interested in understanding what went on behind this event that the public normally sees. It's also essential reading to anyone who cares about ethics and politics, regardless of their place on the political spectrum. It was very difficult to pick an extract to read tonight. Every chapter from this book is full of stories that could be breaking news on their own. The piece I'm going to read is from last election. It's email correspondence between blogger Cameron Slater and John Key's press secretary, Jason Ede. It's based on a story when Slater had was from the point when Slater had access to the Labour Party computers and downloaded membership and donor lists, 
and began publishing stories about them. The National Party president said that the party had no part in the leaks. It had been a close shave. The next day, on the 14th of June, Ede and Slater exchanged several emails expressing their relief that Labour had not discovered Ede's role. Ede wrote, An interesting sidebar in Pagani's story is that they're chasing us by matching IP neighbourhoods and the types of computer we use. You stand out like dog's balls because of your damn Mac. He continued, In my case, I wish to offer a hearty sigh of relief and celebrate dynamic IP addresses. He meant his computer regularly changed its IP address, which ensured he could not be identified by it. If Ede had had a static IP address like Slater, the Labour Party might have been able to prove he'd been inside their computer system. He titled his email, Thank you for, IP address for dynamic IP addresses. It is unusually grubby to have a member of the Prime Minister's staff digging around in their opponent's computer system looking for dirt. Ede was doing all this in his role as senior advisor to the Prime Minister. Based in his ninth floor Beehive office, number 9042, only two doors away from John Keyes. Thank you, I hope you enjoy the book. Kia <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, thank you for all coming tonight. Um, there's been speculation about what the book would be about, but I'd like to point out that I was asked whether I was doing a book about Snowden some time ago, and truthfully said that I wasn't, and I hope no one's disappointed that that's not what's happening tonight. <laughs> In fact, I think I've done something, been working on something which is even more important to the country. I've believed for quite a long time that there is a very negative influence and trend going on in New Zealand politics. You see it in the you see it in the attack politics, which has become much more common. You see it in the personal attacks. You see it in the way that people are fearful of being involved in politics often. And I had been researching this for quite some time when I had a lucky breakthrough which allowed me to write the book which you're going to be hearing about tonight. What the book is about is about the way that, it's a, basically, it's a book about what in US Republican politics is called a two-track strategy of um, how a government, how a leader is able to present themselves as clean and above the negative side of politics while vigorously attacking their opponents. And so what this is a book about, the start of the book is about John Key, our leader, our Prime Minister, and the way that he has cultivated a very respectable image of being friendly and relaxed, which is true, but it is at the same time there's been another whole part of his politics, which most New Zealanders may have felt, but they certainly have not seen evidence of or properly understood. And the way that that's proceeded has been the second track of politics, the bit which I think many people in the press gallery probably perceived, but never found much evidence of. And that's where the, the Prime Minister's office was collaborating year by week by week and year by year with a group of National Party allies and proxies who would do their attacks for them. And so what we've seen is this strange disjunction of politics, which people haven't properly understood, I believed. We've had the day by day little scandals and politics, but what people haven't understood is that side by side with the friendly, relaxed leader of the party has been the most vigorous negative campaigning and personal attacks that we have seen since the age of Muldoon or before, but with one of them hidden or disguised because it's done through proxies. And of course that's a wild thing to say unless you get the evidence. And that's, so that's, that's how the book began. The origin of this book was a very random event. And as you know, politics is often defined by random events. You have your great trends, and then random events suddenly change things. In this case, it was when the obnoxious blogger, Whale Oil, Cameron Slater, 
earlier this year, not as a special event, but just as a casual event, slagged off a young man who died in the car crash on the west coast. You may remember it, the feral who had done the world a favour by dying in the car crash. And when that happened, uh, there was a, just unlike many occasions, there was a very strong public reaction to what he had done. And as part of that reaction, his website was hit by a denial of service attack. It was crashed. And what no one knew at that time, and what I did not know at that time, but which I was eventually to find out, is it seems at the same time that that happened, someone came away with thousands and thousands of documents out of his system. And sometime later, I was approached with those documents. And that formed the basis of this book. What I got was thousands... <laughs> What I got was thousands and thousands of communications <clears throat> between Cameron Slater and his network of National Party collaborators. And what they showed for a start, will not, the first part of it will not be surprising, which is an astonishingly cynical and ugly view of the way that they do politics. <clears throat> you are not going to believe what you read and how, awful, how bloody awful it is. But at the same time, by serendipity, those papers provided a much, much more important source of information, which was about the activities going right up to the ninth floor of the beehive. And documenting that thing which I, not just me, but many people had had a, had a suspicion about or a sense about, but which there had been no evidence of, which was the links between, as I've talked about, between the, the, governing, the government and the senior ministers and their attack dogs who at arm's length could um, carry on attacks and dirty tricks on their behalf with their cooperation and their assistance. So that is what I discovered and it has been, I've written that into a book which I think is tremendously important for politics. I think it makes sense of the, not of the bit by bit details of what we see in the news but the whole picture and feel of how politics is in this country at the moment and I think if you read the book you will find you will be um, astonished at how it will suddenly bring into perspective what we've all been living with. And I'll also give you a little clue, although the book starts um, with Jason Ede, who is one of the key characters, and Cameron Slater, and you might and, and examples like that quite astonishing story that Julia told you a little bit of of, of Cameron Slater and Jason Ede working together, going inside the Labour Party computers, both of them and digging out dirt, and then working together, working out which bits of the internal emails and things that they would use Slater to attack the Labour Party with. Now, this is the Prime Minister's person, the office of the Prime Minister, the position of the Prime Minister. Um, while, while there's those kind of stories, and I assure you that actually gets worse and worse chapter by chapter. As you go into the book, you're going to find that things are grubbier and grubbier as you go on, because it is the most astonishing story that has been revealed. And I'm very grateful to the people who helped me and gave me the information, because, it's because this was a story that needed to be told. And so that leads me with my, leads me with my last task of the evening, which is to say some thank yous. I'm glad that Julia talked a little bit about how hard it is to write a book, because I would hate people to think that I just um, smell the election fever and decide that I want to just chuck something into it because it's, cause it's, it, takes, it takes an awful lot of work to get something which is, which I believe is worth putting into the system amongst all the other clutter and, and jabber. But also it takes an awful lot of help to do it and so can I please thank the people who support me and encourage me personally, my IT person who helps me so much, <coughs> the people who read over drafts for me and proofs, the, the many people who give me little bits of information, the people who gave me lots of information, National Party people who trusted me to give me information to build the story with around the stuff I already had, my daughter who you saw there who comments on everything, um, nothing goes out without her approval. <laughs> um, and then the structure of, of people around my publishing. And, which mean that I don't feel at all isolated in what I do. It starts, you've seen Robbie Burton here, my old, old friend from Craig Potton Publishing, who stands with me there. My, the editor is um, Anna, Anna Rogers in, in Christchurch, who's, who's a fantastic person who I trust with my life. 
Stephen Price will be somewhere in the room, my lawyer, which means that I can step into the unknown with a strong sense of confidence that everything will be all right. <laughs> there are the printers who have printed all my books since the very first one nearly 20 years ago when they were in the Wigan Ave here and now, are in the, now several factories later who totally support me in what they do and I really appreciate and so on. I feel very supported by all the people who feel part of the process, the projects which I do and help me through them and if I've forgotten to mention anyone, you know why. Thank you, thank you much, very much and, and I, really, I, um, I really look forward to hearing what you think of the book because I think I've done something good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nikki Hager and Dirty Politics. There is lots of food and there is lots of wine. <laughs> and I, I um, want to say that uh, Robbie will be giving out the free media copies in the lobby behind me. Um, and that's where... Uh, that's where Nikki will be, no, and, I'll be I'll sign, I can sign copies. and then Nikki will come back in and sign copies for folk who are here, not as the media. So um, please feel welcome to stay on, and um, thanks very much. Cheers. <laughs>